Hi YouTube, welcome back to WTFRC Cars. So we've got something else for you today. It is the Sky RC Battery Discharge and Analyzer. Now, what this thing will do, if say you've been out, you've charged all your batteries up and you've only used a couple on them, you want to quickly discharge one. So it will discharge a 2S at about 35 amp and a 3S at about 30. As you move up in S, the amps drop. Um, but I think it will cope with up to about a 6S battery. Um, it'll do LiPo, it'll do high voltage LiPo, and it'll do NIMS up to about 20 cell NIM pack, I think. Uh, but let's have a look what we get in box. So, first thing we've got is the instructions. And they are quite nice instructions on these. Not sure if you'll be able to see anything, but uh, that's basically what we've got. It tells you how to set it up, how to plug the battery in, and it gives you um, a few stats on what performance you'll get. And then on the back, you've also got this table. And basically, this table here, it will show you that, uh, depending on the S of the battery that you're using, It'll give you the minimum cutoff voltage that they recommend. You can ignore this, but it's basically around 3 volt per cell. Um, I wouldn't go any lower than that on LiPo batteries. And certainly not on, if you're running HV LiPos, uh, about 3.1 volt per cell is about the minimum I would run. It tells you the maximum voltage of each cell. It also tells you the minimum discharge current and the maximum discharge current. And there's also a little bit of an explanation of what you get reading on the screen. So if it says ERRH, it means the voltage is too high. It's got to be between 5.4 and 35 volt. And if it says ERRL, then it's telling you it's below 4.5 volt. Or if it just says hot, it means it's overheated. So the over, over temperature protections come in. There's also software for the PC. Now. The difference is, if you run this unit just as is, because it doesn't need any power supply or anything, and you just plug the battery in using an XT60, which it does come supplied with, but it doesn't have a plug on the other end. So I've had to solder this one on, because most of my batteries are EC5, or I've got adapter EC5 to post, adapt, post mount batteries. Um, but basically, what it'll do, if you just plug a battery into it, It will power up, uh, you tap that button to power it up, but it'll power up, you can set your discharge cycle, it'll run through, and then when it's finished, it will give you one minute interval updates up to six minutes. So it'll tell you the voltage it was at, at one minute, two minute, three minute, up to six minutes. Basically, I think they've set it this way because most racers are five minute racers. Um, and it will show you exactly what your LiPo would be at through and just beyond that five minute race. And usually if they have longer races, they will have a pit and swap batteries. Um, when you plug it into the PC through the micro USB, the software will give you an entire chart readout from full to zero. So you'll get a full readout of the performance of that cell. Now, this is handy in case you've got some cells that you think, say you bought some Z-Packs that are rated at 100C, and then you brought some Gen Ace that are rated at 80C, and you want to compare them, you may find that the cheaper battery is not rated so high, and the voltage drops off quicker than the one that's rated lower. Might be completely opposite, but we've got a whole lot of batteries, and we're going to run them all through it, so... We will know at some point. But basically, you plug your battery in. You don't need the balance lead. You press the button to power it up. It'll then flash on the amps. So you can set the amp draw that you want. Then you press the button. And it'll go to the voltage. Now, this is the voltage you want it to cut off at. So... I basically don't like running my batteries down below 3.3 volt per cell. And this is a 3S, so I'd set it to 9.9. .9. Then 
then you press and hold it, it'll beep to tell you it's started, it'll show you the amp draw, and that climbs to where you've got it set, or if you've got it set higher than what it's actually capable of, it'll go to the highest limit it can. It'll then show you the current voltage, and it'll flip to the amount of milliamp hours it's drawn from the battery. And then when it starts to heat up, it's got a fan on the top, and it'll light up blue so you know that it's on. So you let that run, it'll run all the way through, and then once it's drained it to the level that you wanted it at, it'll give you a six minute interval, one minute intervals up to six minutes, of what the voltage was and what at what minute. So at one minute it might be 10.58, two minute might be 10.4 or 10.3. Depends what you've got the amp set at and what milliamp power your battery is. If you want to stop it at any point, you can press it, it'll say stop, press it again. As soon as the voltage starts flashing, that's stopped. So what it'll do now in stop mode is it'll keep the fan running as long as the battery is connected until this cools down. Once it's cool, the fan will switch off. But at any point, you can just disconnect the battery because it's not actually uh, doing anything and it'll just cool down with the room ambient temperature. Now, the other thing you get in the bag or the box is a spare 40 amp fuse and that goes in the bottom here. And that's in case you do anything that manages to short it out somehow, that fuse will pop. Or if anything goes wrong internally, the fuse will pop. So, let's get this connected to PC. And I'll run this battery through discharge on PC. And I'll get you a good shot of the actual graph. So you can see what it will tell you about the batteries. Right. So, first thing you're going to want to do is go to SkyRC then once you get on here you can click on charges view all products see this way I found a find in it and then you want the battery analyzer and if you scroll down we've got a download section and you're going to want to have WinRAR installed or 7-zip like most of the things for RC you need some way of extracting it so, you want to choose your downloads folder, click save, and it's only, I believe, a 59 megabyte file, but SkyRC's uh, website's not the fastest, so you'll have to bear with it as it downloads. I um, think it maxes out at about an 800 kilobytes a second link, which is not like lightning. Um, the only other thing worth mentioning is, most of the... RC equipment and the Sky RC stuff in general will look for a USB 2 interface. So if you've got a modern PC with all USB 3, you'll get weird issues when you plug these devices in. Like if you look in, so if I bring Device Manager up, uh, so if I bring Device Manager up, basically you'll get a weird sort of thing similar to what the old Xbox camera does for me on here. Um, but it'll show up in USB and you'll get like uh, an error like descriptor failed or something along them lines literally because the interface on these devices doesn't support USB 3 but if like me on this system you have only got USB 3 interfaces and USB 3.1 it's not an issue just use a USB hub that's then USB 2 um, you can pick them up dirt cheap for less than five quid off eBay. And if you plug the device into that and then that into a USB 3, it'll then detect. So while that's, um, have a look. So that's just downloaded. So if you go show in folder, and then we can close the web browser because that's not needed. So you can right click and extract. And then you want to double click to install and you'll get this screen come up and you click next next install and the screen will just go blank quickly while you get the uh, user account control prompt to press yes so once that's installed you can then open the app so you get the little icon click on the app and then what you want to do is you want to power up power up your discharger 
So you want the battery connected to it. Once the battery is connected and it's powered up, then connect your USB. So you'll get the sound from Windows to tell you that it's detected it, and it'll say connected, and I'm not sure what it shows up as on Device Manager, but we might be able to find it. So it's going to be on one of serial buses. Not sure if I'm seeing it on there. Let's see if it disappears and reappears. Nope, there's far too many things for me to see what it shows up as. But anyway, the app will tell you it's connected. Then this is a bit strange. So this looks like a slider that you can move, but you actually can't. And what it's showing you is the discharge voltage of the entire pack. So how you move this is by moving this one. So say we want to down, down uh, discharge these to 3.3 volt per cell. Then this slider moves and tells you you're going to get 9.9 .9 volt at the end of it. Now you can have constant current or constant power, depending on how you want to discharge it. You've got the options here for all your LiPo, lead acid, everything, or you can create a custom. So the pack we've got is a standard LiPo. It's 3S which it's automatically detected. But I believe you can alter that. And by altering that, it will alter that, because that's the total of that. But it's auto-detected. This is 3S, which is fine. We're going to use constant current. And then what you want to set here is the maximum amps that you're going to draw out the battery. So if we set this to 20, this is a little bit sensitive. Not sure if you can use arrow keys. Nope, can't use arrow keys. And you can't you can't click on it. So you're gonna to have to move it very gently with mouse. So once all this is set, we can have as voltage and capacity showing up. So green line's gonna be the current, red line's gonna be the voltage, and the blue line's gonna be the capacity. So we should see the capacity increase as it drains it. The voltage de decrease and the current should spike up and hold steady. And it should tail off towards the end. Now, I did initially think that you'd get more than six minutes doing it on the computer. But apparently, you only get a maximum of six minutes. But on the computer, it'll read it at 30 second intervals, it says. But from what I've seen, it looks like it reads it in real time. So... Let's have a go. This this battery is only on storage charge, so it shouldn't take that long to drain at 20 amp. Now, I wouldn't leave this unattended, because if your battery or your cable starts overeating or anything, you're going to want to be there to see this happen, and make sure it's not going to set on fire or anything. So basically what we're looking at here, as it reads the amount of current, it's going up. And that's basically drained it to 9.9 .9 volt. So that one didn't have much charge in it at all. But that's now at 9.9 .9 volt. It tells you it's done. The amps is the green line that shot up. So you can see it managed to get it up to 20. The voltage, you can see it came from... Oh, we're only at 10.6 volt anyway. So it came from 10.6 volt and drained it down to 9.9. .9, and you can see how sharply it fell. Now, the quicker that falls, the sort of less amps your cell can deal with. Um, so if you've got a really bad cell in one of your packs, you'll see the voltage really drop. So you'll see a lot of voltage droop on it as soon as it starts drawing current from it. And it only managed to draw out 86 milliamp power from that. Now, what I'm going to be doing moving forward is giving all the batteries I've got a proper charge and then we're going to be draining each battery down and see what we get on this graph. So then we can directly compare batteries at a set amp draw um, to each other to see one, how much, how much capacity they actually store compared to what they're advertised as and two, we can see how quick the voltage drops on them, which will be interesting. 
see if some of these claims of 100 and 140C and 125 will actually be able to see if there is any actual measurable dis difference between all these batteries, which is going to be quite fun. But, uh, right, so that's the PC side taken care of. The only other thing we've got is firmware version. So, it, there's not really a lot of instructions for this, but the software version's 1.07. The firmware version, it says, is 1.05. But if we check for firmware, it says it can't get any firmware, so... Let's see on SkyRC's site, see if there is actually any firmware for this. Right, so let's see if there's actually any firmware available for it. So it's a BD250. So the only firmware out for it is 1.04 which is older than the one that's currently on it which is why the application saying uh, that can't get firmware so it looks like that were brought out purely for Windows 10 strange that the device says it comes with newer firmware than what's actually available on the site interesting one but I have only just recently bought this so they may have Upload, updated the firmware but not updated the site yet but that's about everything we need to cover from here so let's get back to the studio right so that is the Sky RC battery discharge and analyzer it's got a number of uses one it'll tell you exactly what your batteries are performing like so it takes all the guesswork out of it. If you think you've got a faulty battery and you've got a couple, say you've got two or three of these, one of them seems to be going flat and not lasting as long as the other, you can plug it into this and you will see the voltage drop in real time and you can compare it to the other batteries. You can also plug it into PC and get a full graph readout. Um, if your battery is in warranty and where you're sending it back says they want proof that it's not working, you can send them the graph from this, send them the graph from your good ones, and you can definitely see which battery is faulty. But the link will be in the description below, as usual. And it's quite an interesting and quite a smart piece of kit. Definitely plenty of uses for it. One, analysing your batteries. Two, it will discharge your battery in a hell of a quick time compared to plugging it into a charger that's generally got like a two to maybe five amp drain this can do up to 35 on 2s um, so definitely flatten your battery a lot quicker save you a lot of time plugged into your charger but thanks again for watching wtfrc cars if you like this kind of video like and subscribe don't forget to hit the notification bell and i'll catch you guys again in the next one Where are you?